guys, welcome to this uh, latest edition of the Coffee and Hero Show. So we're taking you through my pool list for the week. So this is always a chance to show off the, the new releases that came this week and also give you a little insight into the kind of stuff I'm enjoying and the kind of stuff that I would recommend in store. I'm actually going to kick off this week's pool list with uh, a graphic novel, which is Akira. So one of my absolute favourite graphics of all time. Uh, one of my favourite comics, one of my favourite stories, one of my favourite movies of all time. So we've now got Akira back in stock, volumes 1 to 6. These are the these are the Kodanasha editions. So they are in black and white, but they read like a Western comic, so they read left to right. So hopefully it's not as off-putting for uh, new readers. Akira is so dense. Uh, I've read it a couple of times in the past. I have looked at maybe getting the single issues at times, so they prove a little pricey. So these are a really good way of getting into Akira if you fancy it. And why wouldn't you? Because it's fantastic. So what have we got this week? So we've also got Immortal Hulk, so up to number 47. So Al Yoon, Joe Bennett, we're approaching the end of Immortal Hulk going to reach its end at issue 50 uh, then maybe hopefully I can read it as I'm still missing a couple of issues uh, but next up we have from Larry Hama we have Iron Fist Heart of the Dragon this is issue six six issue miniseries so that is the last issue of that we have Non-Stop Spider-Man uh, the most ironic title of all time given that this title so far has taken about a year to come out and we're only at issue three so this is Joe Kelly Chris Bacallo I mean they're taking their time with it but it's actually really entertaining and really class art to it as well I've finally been worn down. I'm going to give Star Wars a chance. Uh, War of the Bounty Hunters is going to be a five-issue mini-series. Uh, this is kicking off this week. You know, Charles Soule on writing duties. You've got the coolest character in Boba Fett there. Love the Mandalorian, so maybe a good time to get into that. Next up, we have Basilisk. So this is a new horror title from Colin Bunn. Does he ever stop writing? Uh, again, this comes from Boom Studios, art by Jonas Scharf. And I've heard nothing but good things about this, so looking forward to that. You know me, I love a little indie number one. Just as I love a little variant cover. Uh, I particularly appreciated the comment last week of find someone in your life who looks at you the way I look at variants. That was pretty spot on. Uh, but this one's uh, a one per store variant. So hence it's the uh, the Virgin style. No tree address, that kind of thing. So can't go wrong with that. <clears throat> I got in some new Dynamic Forces stuff this week. And Dynamic Forces, for anybody who doesn't know, they're a, a certification company. They'll have a lot of certificates of authenticity issued with, ish, uh, with certain individual titles. You know, it might be a signature to prove that it's authentic. It might be a Dynamic Forces exclusive cover. And in that little lot, I managed to get another Batman 50 variant. So again, anybody who doesn't know, I collect Batman 50 variants from the wedding. I have this variant already, except one tiny little detail. Well, two. Uh, in the other one, it's uh, Catwoman in her wedding headdress. and this one, it's the goggles. And she has the whip as well. The tiny differences uh, that lead to us collecting all of them, but I regret nothing. Next up, we have a very small press title. This is from uh, Black Caravan, which is a Scout Comics imprint. It's called Black Friday. Uh, this one's all about, uh, if you think of the, the panic and the chaos of a Black Friday seal, it's all about that, but manifested as a monster in a supermarket or in a, a department store. Really fun so far. It's really low print run though. I mean, that that's the epitome of a title that I always say, guys, it's always good to get your pre-orders in as early as possible because now you get any more, that's gonna prove impossible. Uh, it will hit graphic novels certainly at some point, and I'll certainly keep you guys informed and, and give you a little update when that happens, because it is really class. Next up, we have uh, Bliss. So this is an image comic title from Sean Lewis and Caitlin Yarsky. Really great title as well, that about uh, addiction, about legacy, about the lengths that a, a father will go to for his kids. And then it, it throws in a lot of underworld fantasy elements as well. Highly recommend that if you're a fan of something like Sandman. Really, really good stuff. Of the latest issue of Commanders in Crisis. We're up to issue 9 then of this. So this is the Steve Orlando superhero uh, universe. With David Tinto on art. That's going to be 12 issues. Next up again. Jeez I have a lot of indie this week. Just like every week. Uh, we have Dead Dogs Bite from Tyler Boss. This has a very Twin Peaksy type uh, small town feel. Really digging this so far. Uh, Dark Horse Comics. And again that won't be far away from trade. Undoubted title of the week. Deadly Class is back. Always a good thing. Uh, we're up to issue 46. This is the second part of a new story arc, Save Your Generation. Rick Remender, Wes Craig. You're probably sick of listening to me about Deadly Class, but I'll keep on pushing this title. If you have not read it, get on it. It's so good. Uh, we have the next issue then of Deep Beyond. So this is the Mirka and Dolfo Underwater set horror title uh, with the art by Andrea Boccoretto. Really, really good title as well. Digging that. It's got a real... I don't know if you guys will remember, maybe this is just me being really old, but there was an old uh, Sega Saturn game called Deep Fear, just set in an underwater facility. Very Resident Evil, actually. It's very, very good. 
We have next up is Family Tree, so from uh, Jeff Lemire and Phil Hester. This is the last issue of that. Again, a really cool title from the uh, from the creator of Sweet Tooth. Firepower is a big one this week, so big one in all ways. This is the twelfth issue, so of course it's oversized. This is going to be the end of a big story arc, probably the beginning of another. But yeah, Robert Kirkman, Chris Samney's Kung Fu epic is just getting better by the issue. Same for Noctera. Uh, Noctera, I always had faith that it'd be great because it's Scott Snyder, it's Tony S. Daniel, but issue three of this was a particular highlight and it's only getting better, so we're up to issue four of that. Next up we have Redshift, which is a Scout Comics uh, title as well. So again, low print run, but I do have a few spare of these. Uh, this looks like an outer space horror, and again, I've heard really good things about that. Yeah, I can't help myself when it comes to variants. I admit I have a problem. I mean, I already have Shadecraft number two, but just look at that variant. That is just absolutely glorious. It's a, a title all about, you know, giving you meaning to the old idea of being afraid of your shadow. And I just love this title. It's got slight Scotty Young vibes, but obviously not Scotty Young. Next up, we have The Walking Dead. So we're up to The Walking Dead Deluxe. We're up to issue 16, I want to say. 16 indeed. Uh, so with this one, it is a little bit of an annoyance this week because Diamond didn't send me any cover A's despite having 15 of them on pre-order. I collect the connecting covers rather than the cover A's. And uh, so that arrived in. <clears throat> right, here we go. On to the DC stuff. I'm not biased at all, I promise. Uh, so we have the next issue of Batman this week, so issue 109, so we're continuing on the great stuff from James Tinian and Jorge Jimenez and Tomo More on uh, Colours as well. And then we'll have the backup story Ghostmaker as well from Tinian, which has been pretty great so far. Yes, of course I have variants for them. Uh, we have the DC Pride variant on one side, uh, which is by Jen Bartel, and then we have uh, the traditional variant, which is from Joshua Middleton. Again, I admit it, I have a problem. Uh, I spoke about Batman the Animated Adventures Continue on the uh, What's New in This Week uh, video. And this is the single issue series starting, as I say, I mean, we're bringing in the Court of Owls to the Animated Adventures. You've got Dead Man in this as well. I love this series. It just, just levels of nostalgia just work for me. We then have next up is Batman Catwoman. So the next issue of Tom Keenan Clayman's Batman Catwoman epic. Uh, obviously in, incorporating Phantasm here. You've got Helena, the which is the daughter of uh, Bruce and Selina in the future as Batwoman. Really great series, you know, stellar art as you would expect. And of course I needed to bring a variant home as well, but I can't just look at it. It's beautiful. Uh, so absolutely fantastic one, that one. That's Travis Charis. Uh, next up we have Crush and Lobo. So this is a, a brand new title from Marcio Tomaki, uh, artist by Manike Nahalapin. And I really am enjoying Teen Titans Academy and in the latest issue of Teen Titans Academy, Crush walked out and has obviously walked into her own title. So again, showing that the DC Universe, they are starting to link it together a lot more, which I'm enjoying. We have Green Lantern from Jeffrey Thorne as well, next up. So I haven't read issue one and two of this, but I've been told really good things. So I've just let a couple build up to jump into that. We got the latest issue of Justice League this week as well. So Bram Michael Bendis, David Marquez, and then of course you have your Justice League backup story from Ram B. And again, I'll say it over and over and over again. These should be a reverse. It should be Justice League Dark with a Justice League backup story. Just a couple of titles to finish off with then. We have the next Batman Second Son. So we're up to issue three of John Ridley and Travel Foreman's uh, alternative Batman take, which has been really great so far. Next up, we have Swamp Thing. So we have again Ram Beam, Mike Perkins. We're up to issue four of that. And again, some brilliant, brilliant storytelling. And I'll finish off with probably one of the biggest titles of the week. And this is James Tinian's latest horror title kicking off. This is a brand new number one. Uh, art on this one is Alvaro Martinez Bueno. And this is going to be big, guys. Get on this early. We, we tried to tell you that something is killing the children. We tried to tell you with Department of Truth. And now getting those early issues is pricey. So this is the nice house on the lake. This is a DC black label title. It's a $4 title. Um, I can't recommend getting on this early enough. This will no doubt go on again. So this is probably title of the week. That's the cover A. And then we also have the cover B's in stock, which, are, which is uh, Martin Simmons, which is the uh, artist from Department of Truth. So good working relationship there with Tinian himself. So yeah, so that is my pull list for the week. So as ever, anything appeal to you, just get in touch or of course, pop into the store. Again, we are open fully at the moment. We are open 
10 o'clock to 5 o'clock, Monday to Saturday. And, uh, you know, anything you need, as I say, just drop us a message or call in. So I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope you enjoy the other videos uh, dotted around the Coffee and Heroes Network. And I uh, hope you guys are staying safe out there. So I look forward to seeing you in stores soon. Take it easy.